Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pour a concrete slab for a shed. Now this shed slab is going to be 12 feet by 16 feet. Uh, the 16 feet is across the back and across the front, and the 12, it's going to be 12 feet deep. So we got a gravel pad here, and the gravel pad's been here for about a year, and the homeowner decided they want to put a slab on it so they could build a brand new shed. Like I said, this shed's going to be 12 by 16. So the first thing I do is I get the boards laid out and I start measuring each side and marking my measurements. So I'm marking my 12 feet deep and I'm, there I am right there marking my 12 feet on that side. And I mark my 16 feet across the back. So we screw the board in right there, right on my 12 foot mark. We always start on one corner, it doesn't matter which corner. And now I'm screwing that side in right on my 16 foot mark. And as you can see that board there on the left that we're measuring right now again and, and screwing to is a little bit longer than 12 feet. So it doesn't matter, it can run by. It could be 13 feet, but you're just screwing it in right at the 12 foot mark there. And then we started on that front one. So now what we're doing is just making sure the the forms look pretty even on the gravel pad all the way around. So there's about a foot of gravel on the outside of the uh, sled shed slab. So we don't want it kicked one way or the other. So once you get the forms all screwed together, now you got to make sure the they're square. You don't want to build on this thing if it's out of square. So you go diagonal the diagonal you make sure those two diagonals are exactly the same measurement hey guys make sure you stay tuned for the end of the video or I've got a course about how to do this more in-depth course that'll teach you step by step and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at that course at the end of the video so you can decide if that might be something you want to you want to purchase if you're gonna do a slab like this for yourself this is definitely a you know, if you're if you're kind of handy, this is a DIY kind of concrete slab right here, a shed slab. 12 by 16 is a pretty small slab, so it might be something you can handle yourself versus hiring someone like us to do it. So that's why I'm making this video for you guys. Also, if you get value out of this video, go ahead down there and smash the like button. And hit the subscribe button too. Also, I come out with a couple videos a week about stuff like this, all kinds of concrete stuff. That's what this channel's about. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. So once we get the slab square, then we'll put those metal pins in each four corners so it doesn't move. And then once we get the four corners pinned, then we, we put a screw in top of the board. We go right in the middle of the form and we run that string around it. And that string's going to gonna show if the board's straight or not or if it's bowed in or bowed out. And then we can use that string to keep the board straight and drive in the rest of our metal pins. Those metal pins work good for doing slabs. Um, I'll have a, a link for those down in the description. You can get them right on Amazon. That'll be an affiliate link. So, I mean, if you click on them and get them through Amazon, I'll make a tiny little commission, which which helps support me in, in making these videos. They do take quite a bit of time to make. So any little support I get from you guys, I, I really appreciate it. Any other tools you'll see us use too, I'll, I'll have links for those down in the description. So we'll get all the, the boards pinned nice and straight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the, the forms level to grade. And I use, I use my laser. You can't see it in the video. It's right off to the side. But it's a Topcon RLH5B. It's a self-leveling laser. So, I mean, it's real easy to use. I've got some other videos on it. I'll link to it at the end of this video so you can go check that out but once we once we establish our grade this is about a, a five inch thick slab then we'll either set the top of the form right perfectly to grade if we can or we'll just mark down inside the form with a pencil mark and snap a chalk line either way will work so we get our grade set now what we're doing is we're putting well, these are kind of like metal chairs or they're actually called slab bolsters and they help keep the wire mesh up off the up off the dirt when we pour the slab because we want that wire a couple inches up you know into the concrete to help 
reinforce the concrete and hold it together. It doesn't necess- the wire doesn't necessarily keep the slab from cracking, but it does help hold it together and reinforce it. If it does crack, it's not going to want to separate. Those wire cutters are great. I'll have a link for those down there. Those are the easiest way to cut that wires with those bolt, bolt cutters. And that's it. We got our slab all formed up and ready to go. So now what we're doing is we're pouring the concrete. And we're using a 3000 PSI concrete for this. And you can see, all you got to do is, you know, you order your concrete. This was about four yards of concrete for this thing. And you can use those, you know, those things we're using to level the concrete with and pull it around. They're called, there's a couple different terms for them. We call them come alongs. Um, you can concrete rakes. Everybody has a little bit different term for them. But again, you can you can get those right down in the description. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them from we you know we get them from Marshalltown. You can get them from Marshalltown also. I have a link for that down in the description. And then to screed it with, I mean, you could if you're just doing one of these for yourself, you could technically use a a really straight two by four if you want to depending on how wide the slab is. We have these uh, magnesium screeds because we do, obviously we do this every day. So we have all different types and sizes of screeds. So once you get the concrete poured in there, now you're gonna mag the edges with, a, with that mag float. That's gonna be your pad that you go by. You know, when you wanna, the reason you mag the edges is you want to smooth out the edge. You want to push down those rocks and bring up the cream. You can see how nice and smooth that's looking around the edge. And that's going to be kind of what you use to screed off from. If you're not screeding right off the top of the board. And even if you are screeding off the top of the board, it's still a good idea to get those edges magged and get them nice and smooth. Then once you have your edges magged, now you can screed the concrete level and it gives you something to go by. So you can either, if your screed is long enough, you could actually screed, like see I got one guy over there is on the outside of the slab. If you had one long, if you had a 16 foot screed, you could both screed from the outside. This is a 14 foot screed, so we have one guy on the inside kind of using that wet pad to go by then Luke was on the outside using the top of the form again guys stay tuned for the end of the video I'm gonna I'm gonna show you my concrete slab course real quick just where I go step by step how to do this kind of stuff I think it's well worth the money if you're thinking of doing a slab yourself whether it's a shed slab like this or a garage slab or even a house slab um, I teach you everything you need to know about doing a concrete slab this slab is going to just have a bow float finish. It's not going to have a power trowel finish. So you'll see once we get done screeding here, we're going to run the bow float over it. And that bow float is going to you know, make the surface nice and smooth. And it'll be plenty smooth enough for a shed, just a little storage shed like this. So all you need to dump out into your into the slab is just enough concrete that you need. You know. Usually that concrete truck's going to have more than what you need. Hopefully you don't want to run short. And what they'll do is they don't need to dump that on site. They'll just take it back to the concrete plant and they'll either dump it in a pit or they'll make some blocks with it. So, you know, don't let the guy tell you that I got to get rid of all my concrete here and leave a big pile of concrete on site. They can just take it back. We don't like to get any extra if we don't have to on somebody's somebody's site that somebody has to pick up later so we always stop the pour a little bit short then screed it down and see what we need and scrape in just what we need all right so you can see the bow float again i'll have a link for that down in the description you can see you run that back and forth over and it makes it nice and smooth it pushes down the rocks brings up some cream and gives you a nice smooth finish 
And that can be your final finish if you want. If you want to trial this thing, you could wait for the concrete to dry up and trial it. I do show you how to trial concrete with a power trial in that concrete slab course. But if you just run this thing both ways across this thing, it's going to give you a pretty smooth finish. And then right here at the very end, I'm going to show you this Luke right now. Now he's putting some anchor bolts in. So if you're going to build a, a, your shed, then these anchor bolts are a good idea to bolt it to the slab. And these are six inch anchor bolts. And this guy's going to build this with two by fours. So you just push those down into the concrete and you leave them sticking up about an inch and a half to two inches right in the middle of what would be a two by four so about an inch and three quarters in from the edge and then you can bolt your first plate down using these anchor bolts if you're buying a shed and setting it on here then you really don't need these anchor bolts you set the you set the shed on and then you can drill down through the sill plate and use tapcon screws to anchor the shed to the slab well that's how to form and pour and finish this 12 by 16 shed slab guys and again coming right up at the end of the video i'm going to take you through my course and you can check that out and then if you want to purchase that course so you can do your own slab then that'd be great that's another way to help support me in the channel and hopefully save you a bunch of money so you don't have to hire somebody like me to do this for you stay tuned hey guys mike here so like i said this is inside my concrete slab course how to form and pour a concrete slab so this course will walk you right through all the steps you need to successfully form and pour a concrete slab just like we do I wanted to make it as easy as possible for you guys to learn how to do this stuff. So I broke it all down into a bunch of little steps. And I think you'll find that it's going to be pretty easy to, to do your own slab. So the first thing, you know, I welcome you to the course. A little bit about myself. You know, I make, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. I've been in this business for 39 years. Um, formed and poured I don't know thousands of these slabs over those years so um, we've we've come up with a technique that we use that's fast it's easy and uh, it works really good every single time I go right through all the tools you'll need to, to form it and to pour it so I break down all the tools you'll be able to, to check that out so you won't be pouring and, and forming this thing and not have all the right tools and this is where the good stuff starts. So um, I show you how to lay out the forms, the best way to lay out your forms, how to fasten the forms together. You know what we screw our forms. So I, I show you what we use for screws and, and how we screw them together so they don't come apart. Measuring the sides, the best way to measure your sides and get your corners fastened together and then how to square the slab so it's perfectly square and easy to build on. And then again, how to string, run the string, That's that makes the boards so you can have something to straighten them by. And then what to use for stakes, and then how to, how to put those stakes, how far apart to put them so they hold the boards, so the boards don't bow out. And also how to use some kickers and some braces on your boards if you have a really thick slab, because that concrete's gonna wanna push those boards out. So you wanna make sure everything stays nice and straight. And then I show you, you know, with a laser, how to establish your thickness in your grades and how to set the forms to grade down here so your slab is perfectly level or even if you want to pitch the slab a little bit, how to do that. So there's a, there's a bunch of steps in there to make sure your slab is formed up right. Getting it formed up is, is probably more than half the battle and getting it ready to go. And then the next thing I show you as I take you through the steps on how to pour the concrete for the slab and you know how, what what kind of concrete to order how to how to get the truck there what slump to use and then just how to pour it how to screed it how to bull float it and that gets you to 
where your slab is formed and poured and with a nice bow float finish. And I mean, technically you could leave it like that if you, you know, watch how we bow float and get it nice and smooth, or you could power trial it. So I've got another lesson in here on forming another slab. This is a 24 by 20 garage slab where I take you through again, how to form the slab, how to pour it again, and then I actually how to power trial it. I broke it down into a bunch of different steps on when to start power trialing, you know, how long in between, how many times you power trial it to get it smooth. So you'll learn exactly how to power trial the slab. You can get a power trial right at a rental place, you know, how to, how to run that power trial. And then for some bonuses here, I got, if you're doing a bigger slab, you know, I show you how to run a vibrating screed, a vibra screed. So you could rent this at the, at a tool rental place if you're just doing this one time. And I, I take you through the steps on how to run a vibra screed. Uh, I got another bonus in here on how to figure the concrete so you can calculate your concrete correctly. Make sure you have enough and you don't run out for whatever thickness that you're pouring your slab at. And then another bonus here, I'm showing you how to form a six inch concrete slab. So this is just a t using two by sixes. Um, the other slab up top is with two by twelves. And then one, one extra bonus down here is again, how to power trial concrete again. So it gives you another, another video to go by. Cause I mean, power trialing isn't something you just pick up in, in a half an hour. So I've got quite a bit of material here on how to power trial. So if that's what your goal is to have a nice smooth power trial floor, there's a couple, couple videos in here where I'm teaching you how to do that. And you should learn enough. So you, you could be able to get your own smooth finish on a power trial floor. And then I'm constantly adding to this and upgrading it. So this is what you get inside my concrete slab course, guys. And I, I highly recommend it if you're gonna try to do your own slab. It could save you a ton of money. It's 97 bucks for this slab. So I, I'm keeping the price really low for you guys. Uh, very affordable. And I'm giving you a, a ton of really good information in here. So thanks a lot.